Good morning. I'm in Samaria. It's Samaria looking at a beautiful place which you are gonna see right now. It's a beautiful big uh, pool that collected water because there's not a lot of water here. The valley of Deir Kalla is the agriculture area. You can see that there's a plaster, plaster on it. It was um, it's a rock cut um, water system. Uh, five like that, not as big as that. But it shows you that it was a big place. And look look at that, look at that building itself. Impressive, isn't it? It's a Christian place and soon we will see why. Look at the quality of uh, that place. It's in the like middle of nowhere in a way. But you can see that some, the one who built it knew what he's doing. Big stones, um, decorated place. Wasn't built by a private house, as you can understand. The Arabs, actually, that um, found that place, they call it Deir, which is another way to monastery at that time, and Kalla, which is a fortress, and it looks like it, isn't it? Although it's a um, beautiful place and a big one, there's not, there's even not one evidence, written evidence, documents about that place. This is strange, isn't it? And uh, uh, there are a few more places like that. No information about it. The only information that we have is archaeological evidence. This is the first time from here and I'm happy. Again, it's a tour guide tour because we're not working anymore. No, it's a war time between ISIS, Gaza, and uh, and uh, Israel. And uh, what I wanted to see is a mosaic floor, which not the most well known. Aunt, usually white. Uh, there's a lot of it, like here. here. Um, that tells you that it was important, but not as important as other places that we're going to see soon. Okay. Uh, 
I'm looking for two crosses here. One I know that been damaged. The other one was somewhere here about there. Maybe you can see it. I cannot see it. But look how beautiful is the entrance itself. Here there was one. And I think above it was another one. But if I won't find it, I will ask Hilik, a tour guide, um, to show me it. And I will show it to you. Look how beautiful is that place and a lot of decorations here. For example, look at that. This is the monastery and soon you will see the church. I'm in it now. You can see that one of the apps here. But you can see the wall. And a wine press. That is the pressed uh, area. That's where they press the uh, the grapes. And the church. Church is here in front of you. This is the apps, as we know, the altar. That's the Bama, that's the beginning of the altar. That was the fence here. And the altar was standing right here. The reliquarium is right there, and the apse was above it. Look, uh, look at the quality of the apsis itself. From there, the stairs goes to the pool that we saw there. The church was right here, and the narthex was right there. That's the narthex. That is the church. And the abscess, right there. The amazing mosaic that was found right here is at the Good Samaritan Museum on the way to the Dead Sea. Uh, I took a video of it, and if you look at it in my YouTube channel, which you are going to subscribe, of course, please do that, you will see how beautiful it is. All about quality. Quality, quality, quality. The windows that you see here, we saw it from the other side, used to be bigger and then they narrow it because the um, windows is for light, but enemies can enter through there as well. Then they narrow it uh, to the minimum as, as possible. Then you can see the wine press and, uh, and this is a good, uh, this is an amazing question because it's in the middle of nowhere and they could uh, produce more than 8,000 8, bottles of wine. Who use it? For what purpose? I'm not sure that there is a question because uh, there is an answer with it because remember we don't know a lot about that place. But huge church with a beautiful mosaic a winery that is not for local uh, people, I mean, it's for it's industrial. And there is more, um, um, there's more agriculture things here. And we don't know, we don't know why, we don't know why they build it. One answer to our question, who built it, is see where the 
person is now standing? We found an inscription that tell, told us that Justinianus, the Byzantine Caesar, at the 6th century, 530 AD, built it. Then now we know that it was built by Caesar himself. He built a lot of churches, the Nia in Jerusalem, the Nativity uh, Church after the Samaritan destroyed. And remember the Samaritan because they have a, quite a story here as well. The inscription itself is at um, uh, the Good Samaritan Museum as well. Then now it's worth visiting. In that area, the beginning of uh, Israel, uh, in the Byzantine time, uh, all over Israel there were 1.5 million Samaritans. A lot of synagogues, a lot of places, a lot of settlements. At the end of the Byzantine time, the Christians became the majority. The Samaritan were the second uh, group. The Jews were the smallest group at that time. Samaritans at the time of the Byzantines uh, weren't easy um, to the to the Christian. The Christian, I must say, weren't nice to them as well. Then four times they tried to fight to rebel the Christians. This is one of the reasons that Justinianus decided to build places here. Why here? Because it's actually kind of a line of a line of uh, fortresses, fortresses uh, with churches or even without it, agriculture, for example, that guard uh, the place from the Samaritans. Samaritans were behind me, and the Christians were there. Today, uh, just from the information, there are around uh, 800, 500 Samaritans. Half of them are in Shechem, half of them in Cholon, city next to Tel Aviv. And we are talking about that. This is Tel Aviv. And if we will enter to politics, Samaria ends at that village, and behind it, it's <coughs> Israel. Then, if you are, if if you see that place as um, as a Palestinian place, the West Bank, then you can see that the West Bank ends there, and from that leaves Israel only, let's say, ten kilometers wide in some places. Quite a small place. Dear Kala, being destroyed um, when the Muslims enter to Israel, the 640. From that time, no one used it. Then uh, you're one of the first who actually um, can visit it together with me or with that video. 1.5 million Samaritans didn't die. A lot of them have been um, converted to Christianity, but most of them converted to Islam. And uh, at Shechem, which is the Mount Grizim, there are so many neighborhoods that used to be uh, Samaritans, and now they are Muslims. They know that 500 years ago they've been um, Samaritans, but now they are Muslims. Then, Shechem, Mount Grizim, is that way, and around it, it was the Samaritan area. That was the border between the Samaritan at the second temple time. From here to there, it was the Jewish uh, 
area and at the Byzantine time it was a Christian area then. That place was kind of a border between those two Samaritans and the Christians, Byzantine Christians. If you will go to the um, research on the um, letters of the Samaritans from that time, we won't find a thing because there aren't any. The oldest um, sources from the 11th century, then we don't know a lot about those four rebel, four um, war between uh, wars between uh, uh, the Samaritans and the Christians. There's only few sentences about it. The Samaritans, or let's start with that. The Christians, when they occupied that place from the Jews, they looked at the Jews as, you know, we are the real uh, Israelis, but you are part of it as well. The Samaritan saw the Christians as the enemy. Then in that case, uh, the war was mainly between the Samaritans and the Christians. And soon we will go down to the cave, which is another part of Deir Kala. And um, we will continue to talk about it, but there's a lot of... Uh, um, inscription there is about the hate or rules against the Samaritans. Um, what I will ask you to do is please, yes, please subscribe to my to my uh, channel. I am not working at all now, and if you want to support uh, my channel, you can do that by um, look at uh, at the bottom of the like. Uh, next to it you will see a shape of heart it's called super thanks you can do that through there you can do that through the inscriptions that I will add at beneath the uh, the video the text beneath the video I will add more uh, details about um, uh, that area and uh, you will see two links of buy me a coffee and uh, PayPal through there you can actually support my channel because you are the only income of mine in the next year. Look how beautiful is that mosaic for a part of the church. Remember, the most of it is not here. You can see the, another inscription, but sadly without the text here and there. Now let's go out. Chilik promised to show me the um, the cross. Remember that we looked for the cross, and now we found the cross, and it's not it's not a regular cross. Let me show it to you. Here it is. I think you can see it. It's the Golgotha, the Calvary cross. It, there's a cross above the hill, the Golgotha. It's um, um, the same cross you could find there, but someone deleted it. Then now we found it. Now we know everything about it. We are going to the cave. Uh, then don't go away. I might cut that video into two. You will have, you will have a, a video of the cave itself, which is downstairs. Uh, but for sure, I will upload that part as it is, as one part, one, one video. Just to show you where we are, that's the airport of Israel. Then, um, if you're talking about controlling from here, if it's going to be part of Palestine, like Gaza was part of Palestine or part of Israel, uh, they can shoot every airplane that will enter to Israel and uh, it will I will have I know that I live in Tel Aviv I will have less than 15 seconds to find a shelter uh, not easy isn't it today there's a lot of olive trees uh, all over the Samaria but at ancient time here as we already know there were uh, there were a lot of vineyards here remember 8,000 8,000 bottles every year, Oof, a lot. Look at the valley of Shiloh, 
Right here. Let me show it to you from here. It's even more beautiful. Wow, what a beautiful picture. I took a beautiful picture. If you actually watching the first, the second part, then you must understand that uh, there is another part. The first one is about Deer Color itself, which is, I think, amazing. It's a unique video because I didn't see any video on YouTube about Deer Color then. And this is the first one. Yay! I'm a pioneer! Looks like another water system. Remember, it was curved out of the rock, and you can see here part of the plaster. Mm. And if that was a tomb or not, we don't know, or at least I don't know. But you saw a fig tree there. And we are heading to the cave. You can see the wall of the monastery of the Urkala. The view from here is absolutely lovely, although it's a little bit cloudy today. I must say it's quite hot today. It's supposed to be around 21, 22 degrees. In front of you, you can see Tel Aviv. Then you can understand that that area is controlled by it. Erzeliya, Kfar Saba, Hedera. If you will turn left, Rishon Lezion, and then Ashkelon and Gaza. Such a beautiful place. The tour, I'm not the tour guide. Um, the tour guide is Yechilik, which is such an amazing person. Uh, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. This is Shaked Almond Tree. And my family name is uh, Almond. Shaked, it's Almond in Hebrew. And we reach the cave. See the wall of the color above it. The cave has been nifed. I wish that we could continue all the way down, but we have to climb all the way up. Oh, wah, 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 wah. I know that there's a spring there. Yeah, this is the cave itself. Uh, the, oops, the monks use it uh, later on. The monks use it uh, to be here alone, although it was a little bit uh, different for them, difficult for them because it was a war area. For example, one monk can use that area. You can see how beautiful is the uh, door curved. I mean, this, that was an opening. Then, then they, I mean, the monk could be there as well. Um, above it, it's the only spring uh, of that area, and another room. For the question of why eight thousand bottles of wine. Um, Maybe, I mean, the source is mainly from the Christian source that say they had talked about what's happened here. Um, there were, it all started with that, um, uh, it all started with the Christians who came to here and took um, places that were owned by holy sites, that were owned by the Samaritans, to them, for example, the Jacob well and the uh, tomb of Joseph. Both of them are biblicals. And the uh, Samaritans weren't happy for that. Then they started kind of a war. Um, four different wars in 100 years. 
Justinianus been asked by Sabas, one of the monks, uh, to come and help. Then one of the option, one of the things that he did, he, um, he gave the monks so many benefits. For example, they didn't pay tax. He built them lots of places here. One of them is Deer Kala, and he forced the Samaritans to pay a lot of tax, lots of money. What I forgot to mention is that the spring there went all the way down and you can see that there are lots of terraces here for agriculture. I mean, look at that valley. It's such a beautiful valley. Um, then in that case, now the situation is that the Samaritans are supposed to pay a lot of money, more than they used to pay. It's not worth for them to uh, to be farmers. What the monasteries in that area told them, all right, it's not a problem. What you can do is um, sell everything to us and we will prepare the wine. That's why the Samaritans did it because they uh, the, the monks didn't pay tax at all. It was cheaper for them to do that. They got, I don't know, rights, like uh, part of their wine, part of uh, wheat or something else, uh, and they could survive by that. That's why there's a big uh, um, wine press. We didn't find any evidence of bottles. And this is this is this is strange because usually, uh, if that is a huge factory, um, where are the evidence? Some people say that we didn't find the evidence because they didn't prepare a lot of wine. What they prepared is mostly sugar uh, from vineyard, from grapes. True or not? I don't know. Another option for me is that if the uh, Samaritans here could use the factory there, they took everything back uh, with them. True or not? We don't know. Then, now we know everything about it. It's a 27 minutes of Dear Kala. Thank you for being with me. And if you reach that moment, please write me a message. I really love to hear everything that you have to say. Then, Say goodbye to that amazing view and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.